So Truth Talk today is asking the question, what does the Bible say about saving money? What's the Bible say about saving money? You know, the government is now in its third round of handing out stimulus checks. Many of you have gotten your third round of free money. The legitimacy of this stimulus and even prior stimulus payments is questionable. But let me tell you what's even more questionable than that. We're not going to talk about that. Let me tell you what we are going to talk about. It's how you spend it and what you do with it. Free money, church, is rarely good. Inheritance, the lottery, windfalls that come to us statistically destroy and ruin lives rather than enhance them. It's a fact. What am I saying? Americans don't know how to handle money. That's what I'm saying. We know how to spend money, but we don't know how to save money. What does the Bible say about saving money? Principle number one, saving money is wisdom. Living without savings is foolishness. You must understand, church, that you need a savings account that's more than 200 bucks. It's a new day in America. And I'm telling you, hard times are coming. You need a savings account of more than 200 bucks. Listen to the scripture, Proverbs 6, 6. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor all summer gathering food for what? Winter. Winter represents a hard time. And when you hit a hard time, it's not the government's job to write you a check. You're a fool if you didn't prepare. What is the lesson in scripture? Don't consume everything that you bring in. If the ant worked all summer long and lived meal to meal, winter would come and the ant would die. The ant works all summer and eats some and saves some for a hard time when there is no food. The ant doesn't eat everything it finds. It doesn't live paycheck to paycheck. It stores up. You know, the key to saving is not making more, but living on less, not eating all that you bring in. You know, I know people that have saved more on $40,000 than people I know that make six digit figures. The key to saving is not making more money. The key to savings is wisdom that doesn't consume everything I earn. Fools will never save. Church, I know this is a hard word, but there's some fools in our midst. Fools that will never save. You're broke. You live paycheck to paycheck. You're a fool, and you're going to get caught with your pants down. Winner's coming. The Bible calls us to save. It's not too late at 50 years old or 60 years old to repent and become wise. Principle number one from the Bible is that saving money is wisdom. Principle number two is saving money requires diligence. Proverbs 21 verse 5. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4. Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. Diligent hands. Proverbs 13, 11. Dishonest money dwindles away, but he who gathers money Little by little makes it grow. Saving money happens over time. The problem is, church, many of us are discontent. We don't have diligence. We don't have patience to little by little by little save our money. Putting aside a little money every paycheck and waiting for it to accumulate requires diligence and requires discipline. God expects that from you, church. Diligence, little by little, hard work and saving, that you would be the wise on the earth. Those that don't need a stimulus check, those that are wise with money because of diligence, little by little. Principle number three is saving money requires that I ask questions. Do I need this? Is this necessary? Is this a want? Is this vanity? What is motivating me to buy? You know, answering questions like these out loud so you can hear the answer is usually enough to reveal, should I spend the money or should I save the money? 
Buying whatever we desire without identifying the reason means that you're walking in the flesh and not the spirit. We have a church in America that's full of people, Christians that live in the flesh, impulse by, have no ability to contain and have self-control and to save money. Don't tell me you're spiritual and you can't control the money in your pocket. The Bible clearly calls us to ask questions, to refrain in the flesh. Principle number four, saving money requires me to establish financial convictions. Financial convictions are lines that you will not cross or compromise. For example, and these are good ones, I will not go into debt for anything except a vehicle or a house. I will not use a credit card unless I have the money in my bank to pay for it at the end of the month. I will only pay cash, no credit. I will only spend 20 bucks a month on Tim, 50 bucks a month on Tim. Set a number and keep it. 200 bucks a month on Tim. That'd be great. <laughs> Set a number. Conviction, a line in the sand. I will not stop at convenience stores. I will not stop at convenience stores. I will not stop <laughs> at convenience stores. I will not buy lunch out more than one day a week. Two days a week. Pick a number. Stick to it. Pack yourself a lunch. Show discipline. Plan ahead. Set the alarm. Wake up early. Don't be a fool. And just blow your money at Sheets and the convenience store and on coffee that's poison. No, I'm just kidding. That's my own joke. Christian, you need to save money. I sense in my spirit that we are facing a troubling time economically. A very troubling time. I'm not here to be a financial economic guy, but I want you to know something. The true church of Jesus Christ gets prepared and is wise. Because in our wisdom, God's able to bless. We're facing troubling times. You must be prepared. Just as Joseph walked into Egypt, looked Pharaoh in the eye and said, there's a famine coming. I need to store up some grain. I'm telling you, church, you need to store up some grain. You need to have a savings account. You need to be one that is wise with money and be prepared. So my question to you today is, are you living as a wise man or are you living as a foolish man? Do you know what the Bible has to say about saving money? So that's all for this week's Truth Talk, but there's more to be found about saving money in the best-selling book of all times, written over a span of 1,600 years. By over 40 authors in three continents and three languages, the Bible is the truth. Amen.